Canadian Computer Collector here, and I'm hanging out with the Brotherly Computer Collector because today we have a challenge for you. Today, oh my god, our microphone. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Baldur's Gate 3 is the new hot game right now for obvious reasons. Obviously, people like From Bones. I've had a number of people reach out to me saying that they want a computer, and when I ask them what does it need to do, they tell me it needs to run Baldur's Gate 3. We have three different machines here that we put together as cheaply as possible to see at just what low specs we can run Baldur's Gate 3. 1080p, 60 frames per second is what I'm hoping for, but we're gonna see if that ends up actually being the case. Okay, in front of us we have a 12 thread, an 8 thread, and a 4 thread build, and a multitude of graphics cards that we're gonna try. However, a trend does develop throughout the testing, and you'll see that more at the end. We were pleasantly surprised. You guys are gonna also be pleasantly surprised if you're looking to get into a cheap machine that's gonna play Baldur's Gate 3. So let's just jump right into this because there's a lot to get done here. Okay, so we're gonna make three machines. This one I picked up just now for $75 US. It was a i7-960, I guess it still is, and it's got 16 gigs of RAM, a Radeon HD5450, which we're gonna swap out. I think in general, this is probably gonna be our best bet for getting Baldur's Gate 3 running for under $200. Let's get a taste. Oh, this is modern. You got the bottom now, power supply and everything. Yep. I got this 1063 gig off eBay for like 45, 50 US dollars. They're so friggin' cheap. You can't get any other card with this kind of performance for this price that uses this little power. The zip ties that were used to attach this uh, are really inspiring me with confidence. Let's cut to the testing now. Do it quick. Benchmark. Uh, so we're at 1080p. We know 30 frames per second is absolutely doable. I'm gonna try high quality 30 frames. See if okay. I can do it. Okay, maximum frame rate. <laughs> no, why would anybody limit it to 10? Um, okay, let's go with high. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, wow. Yeah, 30 frames dips if you really get moving around, but for the oh, most- You can actually see textures now. This is really nice. Great, all right, that's all the testing I need to do here. And now for case two. This thing is wicked. We found this for what, 15 US dollars? About that. There are no fans, no power supply, nothing. It even has the original screws. So there's a part of me that's wondering, has this ever been built in? Let me say, much like this case, my soul is empty, but I am an original school. <laughs> we okay. won't that. All right, so the hardware we're planning to put in this machine is a six core Xeon from around 2011. So for about 65 US dollars, I got this motherboard with a CPU, a beefy cooler, as well as 12 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, according to what I've looked up online, it should run Baldur's Gate 3 with the main thing that's hindering it being the graphics card. So if we can bottleneck it at the GPU, as long as we have enough cores that can run fast enough and enough threads, I'm hoping we'll be all right. Okay, okay. We got the side back on, everything's inside, and uh, let's cut to that testing. So what you can hear over the sound of this computer. I just want to get a stable 1080p, 60 frames a second on, let's say, medium setting. Yeah, I think so. You know what, most people are willing to sacrifice a little graphics quality, but they don't want to play on a potato. You really need to have played D&D before for this game to make sense. Yeah, because it basically just uses D&D rules and does not explain them. And similar mechanics, right? Like rolling. Exact and, same yeah, mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Overall, so. let's go with medium. Let's, uh... Okay. Well, hey, whatever the f going on here is... Okay, and the game crashed. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let's try this again, though. Instead of custom, let's go with medium. And always want to keep FSR on. That doesn't look right. Are you in flicker? I think that's artifacting. Yeah. Holy sh**. That's artifacting hard. No. No, look. Oh, yeah, we, we are, are still getting that. Yeah. What the f You know what? Maybe try resetting or restarting it with those FSR changes. Oh. Uh, AMD detected that the driver timeout, an error occurred, oh no. Downloading content. Yeah. This is a very classic uh, AMD driver experience though. Ah, this does not seem like it's running at all better. Hit that, hit that oh, uh, error, right. Maybe. So, if we put this at medium. <clears throat> That's terrible. Now the other thing I want to just try is if we can put the texture quality to high and leave everything else. Oof. If we go change this one to balanced or maybe even performance afterwards. Oh! Yeah, oh, okay, look, we're getting a solid 30 frames per second. I mean, this kind of looks awful, though. Look how fuzzy it is. Like, see, like, it looks... Actually, this looks okay. Now, if we take the frame rate cap off, I bet you... It's crashed. No, just we're gonna... We're not gonna see... Crash. Well, I, I'll be honest, I was not expecting that. I'm gonna switch to 720. Look, not even that that much better. Look, it's like the cat lady. I would be curious um, where we're getting limited on this one, but we're gonna have to come back to this computer with a different graphics card later. Yeah. Let's just say this one is not ideal at the moment. <laughs> Okey doke. So this is gonna be our cheaper build, correct? The cheapest build. We put this all together for under a hundred U.S. dollars. It is an i5 4590 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Got 240 gigs, solid state drive in there, and uh, another one of the janky Case Fan 1060s. They're such good cards for the money that I actually have really, really high hopes for this machine. We have a GTX Titan in it, which we're going to actually take out and maybe use later on. So between this, CPU, motherboard, and RAM, plus the case, which just came with a whole bunch of stuff that we bought in a collection, I think like we've got a sweet $100 gaming computer on our hands. OMFG. Know what I'm saying? It's okay. I love how the... Can we just do this from the side on this one? Almost certainly. Excellent. Freaking... From uh, Jersey! 1060, even the three gig version is such a strong card. And I think it is now what the 750 Ti was just a few generations ago, which is the most competent for almost no money graphics card you can buy. All right. This sweet case is all together. We've got the 1060 strapped inside the ammo crate. Locked and loaded. Let's see how she tests. <laughs> if I was doing this build again, I would have put the LED up here. Lies. Is she running? Fifth, mid 50s, actually better than the other computers. Both? Serious? Uh, we're on medium right now. Well, this is a, mod, a newer i5, though, right? Yeah. So more threads, not necessarily more better. Yeah. High settings are uh, getting like 40 to 50 frames per second. Well, this is another one. I would also still cap it at 30, just for it to be smooth. Looks great. And you're not getting that fuzzy garbage that we have with the AMD. All right. Well yeah. then. Let's button this one up. All right, so now we have officially tested all three of these machines, but we had a theory that perhaps the drivers weren't working on the AMD card in this one. So we're gonna try and download them directly from the AMD website. And then after that, we're gonna try something else. If that doesn't work, I'm going to then go on to put a GTX Titan Black into this because those are actually coming down in price. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if we can get away with it. So far we've seen decent performance from Nvidia hardware, so we're thinking maybe the issue we're running into is AMD. Shut the hand down. All this is all you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Everything else is immaterial. All you're doing is you're just alternating from this position to this position. Nope. 
I had already done it. We can cut all of that. And let's head straight to the Titan. It took three takes for me to actually say that properly. I think a big part of it too is drinking water. Like not just soda water, but yeah. Remember kids, always clean off your old display drivers when you switch to a different manufacturer. Or people will know what when you look at. Okay, it's looking pretty good. This video, we're going for high, baby. All right. Uh, okay. So far, pretty smooth. 30 frames per second is definitely not even a concern. I'm gonna put it to 720 and see if we can actually hit 60 frames on high. 720. Oh, it already kind of looks rough. But... Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. Oh God, that looks awful. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I it's mean, it's like playing the original Diablo on a CRT. Okay. So then let's try the 1016 here and see if it's like literally any different. All right. So we've got the 1060 in this thing. We're going to do one final test. I had originally envisioned this whole thing to be like, we're testing out three different builds with different tiers of graphics cards, but it turns out the best card is the cheapest one that we got. So now what we're really comparing is four threads, eight threads and 12 threads from otherwise relatively comparable CPUs. Yeah, basically. You know what, this video has kind of evolved as we've made our way through it, and I like where we've ended up. Frankly, the 1060 three gigabyte is a workhorse. I ordered five more of these as a result of this. Ooh, dip down to 24, but... Yeah, this is exactly what I expected, so. Okay, so we're all good here. I think we have some pretty clear data ahead of us. Before we reveal that, we would just like to say, please, if you enjoy what you're seeing, like and subscribe. Don't forget to tell someone to do the same. And also, thank you to our patrons. So for a dollar a month, if you want to get your names in the credits and see the odd early video, check out the details in the description below. So I think the main thing that we learned here is that how many threads you have, whether it's four, six, eight, 12, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And as far as graphics cards go, We've learned that the peasants of today are just as good as the titans of yesteryear. <laughs> yeah, actually the 1063 gig was a wicked card. It was low maintenance, really diverse in that it worked in a lot of different systems and really delivered each time. I was really disappointed with AMD. That RX 480 should have been so much more performant and way more stable. We know that that card works. I used it in a much more modern machine very recently. It was great. So we know it's not the card. The issue is how the driver is running the game. And that's really concerning to me. Okay, so let's talk a bit about specs here and prices. So the first one, we've got the older Cooler Master case, or should I say the smaller one, but decent hardware. Yeah, it's the ugliest of the bunch, but it was also cheap for just about 75 US dollars, plus the cost of about a $40 graphics card, we've got ourselves a nice little Baldur's Gate machine. Yeah, so all in about 110, 115 US for this one. Our biggest loser, of course, is going to be the Xeon. Uh, this one I found to be just a little more sluggish in single core tasks. Mm -hmm. And I also found that it didn't make much of a difference. It's boot time as a server chassis is long and annoying and it does all sorts of checks and you yeah. yeah it's i would say the least favorable but it was 75 us dollars i think it was for the uh motherboard and processor and ram and then we just had to add you know storage etc so this one's and i think you yeah. also paid about 10 for the case so 20 for the oh yes yeah, so 15 for the case yeah so uh total on this one what are we thinking probably uh probably about 150 us dollars yeah either way this one's this one's not quite doing it the same as the i7 did, but on some level we kind of thought that might happen. So moving along to the last one, we have the quad-core i5. This is probably the newest processor of the group, but the least amount of threads. Yeah, with only four cores, I thought that this one was going to be at a disadvantage, but obviously quad-core gaming is still very much the norm these days. Mm. So it had the best per core performance. It was only, I think like $30 US for the motherboard processor. RAM, and then we add in another $40 graphics card. We're getting away with the case included for about a hundred US dollars, and it was just as good as all of our other machines. That's it, eh? A hundred US. Okay, so this is this is the winner in my opinion. Then it really ran the game quite well. I wouldn't say flawlessly, but quite smoothly, especially if you're capping at 30 frames. Well, you know what? Breath of the Wild is 30 <clears throat> frames per second, and everybody loves to go on about how beautiful that game is. So Yes, 30 frames per second is acceptable when you've only got 100 to $200 to spend. I think it's totally fair. And if you don't like that, you can drink a whole bottle of mustard. I've done that. 
So that's all.